Discover solutions to issues that affect your family and professional life with practical information to help you get past life's adversities. Take a proactive approach to power up your life with Rosalie's expert resources. Florida Fish and Wildlife lists black tip shark, bonnet head shark, bull shark, great hammerhead shark, lemon shark, nurse shark, and tiger shark as common species of sharks found right here in Florida waters. If you love factual shark stories combined with innovative research findings, listen up. Joining us this morning is George Burgess, one of the top shark attack experts in the world. And he's the director of the University of Florida program for shark research. To offer some insight here, into the world of sharks and Shark Fest. Good morning, George. Good to be with you. So George, what compelled you to become a shark attack expert? Well, I, I was drawn to sharks uh, as a youngster, uh, lived always near the coast, and uh, was fortunate to be one of those kids that uh, actually grew up to, to be what he wanted to be. And so uh, I was fortunate in that. Uh, once I got into sharks, obviously shark attacks, a, a phenomenon that draws a lot of, uh, of interest from the public as well as from scientists. And so it was sort of a natural that uh, I got into it uh, since I was living in Florida, which uh, uh, is the, uh, the shark attack capital of the world. Tell us about your shark attack file. Sure, the International Shark Attack File is a compendium of investigations of shark attacks uh, of the world, uh, going back uh, as far as we can go back. And our earliest attacks were in the mid-1500s. Uh, and each attack that occurs anywhere in the world, we investigate much like a, uh, uh, the police investigate a, uh, a crime. And the idea of all this is to get the factors involved uh, in shark attack from the perspective of both the human and the shark and the environment. And by looking at thousands of these cases, uh, we're able to see patterns which allow us to uh, offer some suggestions as to how to reduce the risk. All right, so what makes the Atlantic coastline of Florida attractive to sharks? Uh, first of all, it's got nice warm waters. It's uh, subtropical to tropical waters. Uh, it's a very long coastline. If you stretched uh, Florida's coastline up the East Coast, you go all the way up to New York or Southern New England, so it's a large coastline. Uh, we have a large population, of course, in Florida, the third largest population in the, in the country. Uh, none of us live more than an hour and a half away from uh, the water, one way or another, either the Gulf of Mexico or the Atlantic Ocean. Um, and, of course, we have the largest uh, tourist population of, of anywhere else in the world. So uh, put all that together, and it means we've got lots of people in the water, in waters that are nice and warm, that are attractive to sharks, and so we're going to have more of these incidents. So why are we seeing more sharks here in Florida? Uh, we, uh, we're, we're seeing more sharks in Florida and in other places around the U.S. in part uh, because uh, fishery management measures that have been put into effect by both federal and state governments have, have slowed the decline, which we had seen for years. And some of these populations are beginning an upward re uh, return to recovery. And so we're seeing more sharks because of that. But we're also seeing more uh, because we as humans are out there taking pictures and posting things in social media. Uh, so uh, sharks don't, uh, uh, don't get away as easy as they used to. So how do we increase public awareness of how to avoid a shark attack? And what if it's unavoidable? What do you do when a shark attacks? Well, first of all, we need to understand that when we enter the sea, it's a wilderness experience. It's not a... Uh, uh, and it's not like going into our backyard pool. And anytime we enter a wilderness, we know that there's a, a certain risk that are associated with entering that wilderness. If we go to Africa, uh, we know that there's uh, lions and cheetahs and elephants that can do us harm. If we go to the Rockies, we, we know there's uh, mountain lions and bears. So uh, we accept risk when we enter the sea. Uh, obviously, we know we can drown. Uh, and there's things such as jellyfish that can sting us or stingrays that we step on or the occasional shark that bites us. And so we have to accept those risks. That said, once we know that we're going to accept a risk, our next step is how are we going to reduce those risks? And through education uh, in programming, just like we're doing right here, we try to get the message out to humans, uh, how do we uh, re reduce those risks and, and certain things we can do uh, do that. For instance, uh, stay together in groups. 
Uh, don't go in the water between dusk and dawn when sharks are most active. Uh, avoid areas such as uh, inlets and channels where uh, sharks tend to, to aggregate. And obviously get out of the water if you see sharks uh, or schooling fishes or fishermen are fishing. If you're being attacked, get out of the water if you can. Uh, that's always the, uh, the final thing that we want to do is get out of the water. Uh, but that said, if a shark is approaching you in an aggressive way, um, I advise to uh, smack it on its snout. Um, uh, more times than not, the uh, shark will swerve out of its way uh, if you get them on the nose. And again, you try to get it out of the water. But uh, that said, the, uh, the, the nose is located very close to the mouth, so be careful that you're accurate uh, when you swing at them. Finally, if you're actually in the mouth of a shark and being bitten, uh, the eyes and the gill slits, which are located just behind the eyes, are both very sensitive areas. And uh, if you probe those areas with your fingers, uh, you might get the uh, shark to let go of you. George, share some exciting Shark Fest facts to educate our viewers through this awesome programming. Oh, there's, there's a variety of different uh, uh, shows that are being offered uh, on individual sharks, such as tiger sharks and on, on uh, hammerhead sharks. Uh, the, uh, there's shows addressing uh, certain phenomena, such as why some sharks tend to aggregate together at certain places. Uh, and there's a, a variety of other uh, shows that are addressing shark conservation and uh, 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 sort of debunking some of the myths. Absolutely amazing. Thanks, George, for joining us this morning and sharing your shark expertise to help us better understand sharks and why they attack. Good to be with you. fun and discover the pleasures of the summer season while keeping up with the hottest gadgety and techish solutions to make it happen for you? Well, we've got you covered. Joining us this morning with her hottest tech for the coolest summer is Emmy award-winning consumer technology journalist Jennifer Jolly. Good morning, Jennifer. Good morning, Rosalie. So when we combine our work responsibilities and our family responsibilities, how do we get fired up to fit in some fun in the sun? Well, you can't take all your tech with you wherever you go or else when are you ever going to take a break, right? But a tablet is a must take along and for that, I recommend Amazon's all new Fire HD8. That's a tough slate to beat with 12 hours of battery life, rich vibrant displays, lightning fast performance, really tough to beat that. And then for youngsters, you have kids you're traveling with, the Fire HD Kids Edition, that comes packed with pretty much all of those awesome features too, plus a year of free time unlimited, a child-proof case, a two-year guarantee. So those are great tablets, great must-have gadgets for your summer and beyond. Summertime offers one-of-a-kind experiences. So how do we save those moments by using new tech? Well, check out this awesome tiny little gadget right here. It's called the Pogo Cam, and it is the world's smallest and lightest camera that attaches right to a pair of glasses. It has a five megapixel sensor and can store 100 photos or six 30 second video clips. So it's a really neat way, neat gadget uh, for people to capture life, life's moments on the go totally hands-free. Jennifer, it's a must to protect our hair and our skin from the damaging UV rays when enjoying the beach or at poolside. But how about our phones? They're right along with us. How can we protect our smartphones from the sunny, hot environment? Well, not a want, it's a need. A great case. That is an absolute must have for your smartphone. It, it can protect it from drops, spills, dips, dirt, and dust. And for that, we have the OtterBox Pursuit Series. It is the thinnest, most protective OtterBox case to date. It actually seals right on the glass and around the camera opening. So that really safeguards your precious cell phone, again, without getting in the way. It remains unobtrusive. Plus, it comes with a handy little lanyard so you can keep your hands free, but have your phone where you can get to it right away. My my problem is I'm always misplacing my phone and I waste lots of time looking for my phone. Meet your new BFF. It is the Tracker Pixel. It's a small coin-sized Bluetooth device that clips or sticks 
right on to all of your important stuff. I'm talking about your keys, your TV remote, your backpack, your pets, your wallet, you name it. So, okay, it goes like this. You can't find your keys again? Well, you just tap a little key icon on the app that you download on your phone for free, and then your keys, well, they light up and they ring and guide you right to it. And then if you lose something outside of Bluetooth range, the Crowd Locate Network can help you find it. So this has become a, an absolute must have for me when I'm traveling. It goes in my suitcase no matter what. It's not like I'm losing my sight and I need new glasses. Though my eyes do get tired from too much reading. So for that, we have these uh, amazing kind of stick anywhere, go everywhere, thin optic specs. I mean, these have totally come to the rescue for me lately. They are award-winning high-tech reading glasses that sport these ultralight frames, comfortable nose pads, and full-size shatterproof lenses. And get this, they are so durable and indestructible that the company backs them with a free replacement for life policy. Well, summer is a perfect time to get in shape and eat healthy and take our wellness and fitness goals to a whole new level. Well, wellness and fitness gadgets are still super hot this summer, and one of the newest devices just out is called Level Home. It calculates your current state of fat burning with your breath. That's right, I said your breath. All you do is blow into it and a sensor detects a molecule in your breath that tells whether you're burning fat or not. So it's a really serious tech step up from a scale to let you know right away whether you're heading in the right direction. And if you're not, well then it lets you make real-time changes to your diet and exercise routine in order to meet your goals more quickly. But for everything in one place, just go to thunknews.com slash summer to find out all the details about every one of these gadgets. Thanks, Jennifer, for joining us this morning and sharing the hottest tech to keep us the coolest ever this summer. Enjoy your summer, Jen. Thank you so much. You too. Looking to plan your summer experience that will keep you and your family excited this season? Florida is a great place to live and discover new fun places to visit all year round. As you plan your summer vacation, think about living in the Sunshine State with the planet's most beautiful landscapes and over 1,000 golf courses and magnificent beaches that travel over 1,300 miles of our pristine coastline. Joining us this morning is Emmy Award-winning technology and digital lifestyle commentator Mario Armstrong with his favorite must-haves to discover sizzling ideas to get you through the summer season creatively. Good morning, Mario. Good morning to you, Rosie. How are you? You know, Mario, I have been so busy with some home improvement projects. True story, and it helps us enjoy hanging out at our home this summer when we're all done. So what projects have you enjoyed working on this summer? I've been wanting to do a little bit of stuff around the house as well. We uh, hooked up some stuff in the backyard, tried to turn this into a nice little oasis so we could have like a nice cool staycation. And I also wanted to have some complete control over all of my connected home devices. So one of the things that everybody really will enjoy is the Samsung Connect Home. It's a genius combination, Rosalie, of two different features, the SmartThings Hub functionality and mesh Wi-Fi capability. What that all means is that you can connect to hundreds of compatible devices like cameras, lights, voice assistants, and even your vacuum directly from your phone, your tablet, or your voice. And it can cover all that Florida home space up to 4,500 square feet of Wi-Fi coverage, keeping you always connected to the internet and connected to all of your devices as well. So that's super great. Staying safe at home and on the go this summer includes keeping tabs on our dogs. It's hot out there. So one of the things that I did for my dog, Cello, is really looked into this thing called Whistle. It's an all-in-one pet GPS tracker and an activity monitor. Now, this tiny tracker attaches right to your dog's collar, and it even sends you a notification right on your phone as soon as your dog leaves a safe area that you've determined, maybe your home or your yard or even a campsite or at the beach. You can look back at your pet's last 24 hours as well to see what they've been up to. And in honor of the fifth anniversary, they're available in two new colors, which is great. All right, Mario, so what's a sizzling hot must-have app this summer? 
Ooh, well, you know, in Florida, you guys like to have convertibles and sunroofs and all that good stuff. So I have something great for you if you're in the market for a new or a used car. Awesome app. It's called the Auto Gravity app. And it's a must because it will help you find exactly what you want at the nearest dealership to you. The real game changer, Rosalie, is that you can actually get personalized loan and lease offers in minutes. And you can even calculate the value of your trade-in. It's a super awesome, convenient, and transparent way to buy and finance any car using your smartphone. For our viewers who are planning some home improvement projects this summer, think staycation so you can accomplish a home improvement and enjoy your home. Right? Many homes may want to really look at getting uh, this whole new level of fun in your backyard, especially for the staycation, with the Intex Prism Frame Pool. It's available in all shapes and sizes in a stylish and upscale liner color, super easy to assemble, and has all the benefits of a metal frame pool at a price you can dive right into. For most of us with a family and a busy work schedule, <laughs> no matter if it's a beautiful summer day or not, we still have to keep up with our housework. Any solutions to keep housework at a minimum? Right, you wanna be outside, you wanna spend more time with the family. It's all about getting time back to do the things you wanna do. So this summer, you really wanna invest in the Samsung PowerBot R7070. This will do all the dirty work inside for you. It's a robotic vacuum that has more powerful suction and the widest brush among leading brands. Its Edge Clean Master reaches within a half inch of the wall. That's super close. Other features include the Visionary Mapping Plus and Full View Sensor 2.0. That means it maps out the room with precision and cleans intelligently while avoiding obstacles and small items. And actually, you can go to our main website for everything we talked about. Uh, Rosalie, it's at thunknews.com slash sizzling. Wow, lots of great home improvement ideas to enjoy our homes this summer, even on a staycation. Enjoy your summer, Mario. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Rosalie. I'll see you soon. Enjoy the rest of your summer. You too. Do the same. Did you know Florida is home to about 30 wineries from Pensacola to Miami? And wine consumption in the U.S. continues to increase each year as wine sales are up 5% over the last two years. Wine is a favorite of many Floridians. And according to Nielsen, 120 million Americans drink wine and prefer wine over beer, with the five most popular varietals being Chardonnay, Cabernet Sauvignon, Red Blends, Pinot Grigio, and Pinot Noir. Now, identifying what your palate really enjoys comes with years of taste testing. And to figure out which wine you need to pair with what meal is a science. Joining us this morning from the Capitol Grill is advanced sommelier and certified wine educator, Brian Phillips. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, Rose, how are you? Wow, what an exciting job you have, Brian. For me, I get excited over a dry, oaky Chardonnay. Now there's even un -oak Chardonnay. Don't get it, but what other recent trends are you seeing when it comes to wine? Well, I think along with those, uh, those Chardonnays that don't have any oak on it, we're seeing a little bit more dialing back in the ripeness. They're making them more approachable to drink on their own because I think that good news that you're talking about, about the increase of consumption of wine that keeps me employed, is that people are looking for wines that they can drink on their own, um, even with some lighter dishes, and they can always progress to some of the fuller bodied wines with different courses. So I, th I think that's the trend is making more approachable, easy drinking wines. I understand millennials and baby boomers are the largest wine consumers in the US. Why is that? I think that they more want the experience. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of all fermented beverages. I like a beer at the end of a long day. But I think the things you're gonna really talk about and connect to are the people behind the products. Also, wine can act as kind of a mini vacation. So you can try a wine from say Oregon or from France, and wine has that innate capability of just kind of taking you to the place in which it was produced. Give us an overview of why certain wines like a Pinot Grigio is best from Italy or a Red Bordeaux is best from France. Yeah, I think it's all about the climate and the place. I think you can't just plant any varietal anywhere. Um, you know, in particular here in Florida, you know, they have to have specific varieties that work with this kind of climate. 
And so you kind of it takes time. I think in the old world, like in Europe, they've had thousands of years to figure it out. And here in America, even in California, it's a pretty recent thing. All right, Brian, share with us how to identify and choose the perfect wine that pairs up with a specific meal. You know, I think keeping it simple is key here. I think you can go a little overboard, get a little too geeky when it comes with pairing suggestions. Um, I always start off with thinking about a light-bodied wine, like that Pinot Grigio, a Sauvignon Blanc, maybe an unoaked Chardonnay to start off with shellfish and lighter seafood. And then think about red wines with some of those heavier, richer dishes. And then from there, as that starting off point, then you can start to experiment and see what works best. And that's ultimately what the generous pour is all about, is having a customizable wine dinner where you get to dictate how you would like it to go and what you think really works with what. What are some of your favorite pairings with some favorite dishes? Um, for me, I really like Pinot Noir with seafood. I think that you can't go wrong with Pinot Noir. It's a win-win for everybody, especially if you're dining with other guests. Maybe somebody's having some red meat, somebody's having some seafood. Pinot Noir is really a food-friendly wine. It doesn't overpower dishes. It has a very gentle texture on the palate. Also, that fruit's a little bit more on the brighter, tartar side, so it works really well with the seafood. As not much of a wine expert, I know that I like my white wines cold, and red wines should be room temperature, right? You know, I like to put my red wines in the refrigerator for a little bit before I pop them open. I do like my red wines just a bit below room temperature, probably around 60 degrees is ideal. I think that that just opens them up a little bit more, makes them more approachable. And then white wines I like to take out of the refrigerator for about 10 to 15 minutes before I open them up, and that allows them to kind of express their, their flavor and aroma components a little bit better. Wow, there is so much to understanding the world of wines. Where can our viewers learn more? So you can go to thecapitalgrill.com and check out all the details of these wines for this year's summer wine event at the Capital Grill, the Generous Pour. And also we have a mobile app that you can download, um, just the Capital Grill Concierge app. With two clicks, you can make a reservation and get the actual ratings and details and tasting notes for each wine. Awesome. Thanks, Brian, for sharing your wine facts and expertise on many facets of wine. Thank you. Diabetes Prevention Program reports 7.1% of the population has prediabetes. Prediabetes means your blood glucose or your sugar is higher than normal, but not yet diabetes. Diabetes is a serious disease that can cause a heart attack, stroke, blindness, kidney failure, or loss of your legs or feet. And it's the sixth leading cause of death in Florida. 20 years ago, legendary singer Patti LaBelle learned she had diabetes and assumed she'd have no more fun in the kitchen. As many of the 1.4 million Americans diagnosed with diabetes each year may think. So the music legend used her life experiences to author a cookbook to inspire others with diabetes to eat healthy and enjoy the good life. Joining us this morning is music entertainer and author, the amazing Patti LaBelle, to share her diabetes journey and offer advice to millions with diabetes. Good morning, Patti. Hi, Rosalie. Patti, you have said when you were diagnosed with diabetes, you called that a wake-up call to taking care of yourself better. What advice can you share with someone who has recently been diagnosed with diabetes? I realized I had diabetes maybe 22 years ago by performing on stage and being rushed to the hospital after I passed out and the doctor letting me know that I was a diabetic. So it's, it really didn't settle with me right away because um, I did not want to have diabetes. Because my mother had amputations before she passed, blindness with my aunts and uncles and of course changing food and you said that it's not fun more in the kitchen it's still fun for me in the kitchen rose because i create all kind of wonderful mi meals without using you know fat you know the uh, all kind of butter and all those wonderful things that we used to use and i'm using grapeseed oil and lots of fresh garlic and jalapeno peppers it takes away the use of salt like you, you don't have to have the salt you don't have to have all those butters but the food is so tasty and so i was talking to my assistant the other day and he was just diagnosed pre-diabetic 
and he's, gosh, she started off on the good foot. I cheated for a year, continued to eat those bad things, but now that I know that I want to live, I've been taking, you know, precautionary steps. I've been drinking this great, you know, hood milk, you know, and my, my, my food, it's not a milk, it's a beverage. And it's so creamy and tasty and just great. And when I do my sweet potato pies, I use the hood product. And there's a way to live longer if you, if you want to. So it took you a little time, right, to initiate some of these life changes, to start a new path to living a healthier lifestyle. Most of us who have a health condition know we should eat healthy each day, but most people struggle to let it go, stop those bad eating habits. How did you educate yourself to be more mindful? Like I said, it was a year before I really took hold of my life, you know, after being diagnosed. And so, of course, you check your blood sugars, you know, maybe three times a day if necessary. You do have to take insulin in some cases. I started off taking metformin, now I'm not taking that any longer. And my A1Cs, gosh, they've gone from up to down to perfect right now, you know. and. I do believe in great tasting foods, and with this uh, Hood product, it, it saves a lot of souls and it gives you happy smiles when you, when you taste it. It's great. And a lot of people who can't not use milk anymore, this is not a milk, but it's a creamy beverage that you, you're gonna love. In addition to being a music legend with great music that I love and listen to for years, you're also an accomplished cookbook author. Share some of your recipe recommendations for someone who may need some inspiration. Well, I have the uh, the cookbook. Uh, it's it's called Light Cuisine, you know, and that that helped me a lot because like you start grilling your foods and you know baking them and no ham hocks, just like turkey legs if you want, or just plain kale with no meat. Uh, and gosh, there's so many things that I did to to make myself better. Uh, with the food, I, and I am a foodie, so I cook all the time, and every day there's a new safe recipe for me to make my friends happy. And when they taste it, they said, how did you prepare this? And I'll tell them that simple way with the grapeseed oil and fresh garlic and loads of good ingredients. Thank you so much, Patty, for sharing your journey of living a life with diabetes and creating recipes to help others cook up dishes to enjoy their good life. Bye-bye, Rose. offers a great time to discover the good life. Try entertaining your friends and family at home or celebrate a quiet fine dining experience. Discover Florida's coastline and the beautiful natural habitat to help you relax and enjoy our amazing environment. Share with us your summer's coolest experiences to create great memories forever at facebook.com forward slash Rose Lee Show. And follow us on Instagram at The Rose Lee Show. And watch this episode and many others here at Ion Television or 24-7 at rosaleearchershow.com. Thanks for joining us this morning, and we look forward to seeing you soon.